Hey everybody, welcome back to Everything Money. It's Seth here as always with Paul and Mo. We're talking about stocks. Today we're talking about dividend ETFs. This is a rarity for Everything Money, Paul. I mean, we do tell all of our viewers to put a majority, vast majority of their money in ETFs. These specifically are dividend ETFs. Paul, we have a lot of patrons who love dividends. They love getting that extra money, the icing on top, the the, the cream on top. They love getting that, that extra dividend from companies like AT&T, um, and, and 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 ETFs, which I didn't actually know much about these high dividend yield ETFs. So, Paul, give us your thoughts on why companies issue dividends, why people love them so much, and in general, what your thoughts about dividend based ETFs. So, guys, I hear a lot people love dividends. I like dividends. It's nice to get that cash in. It makes you feel warm and fuzzy. You're getting a return on your company without having to like worry about the balance sheet and all that stuff. There's a few things I want everybody to understand. First off, everybody thinks that every dividend is safe. Mm -hmm. We talked about this a thousand times. It is not. And most people look at earnings. So I compare dividends to the free cash flow. Free cash flow is cash from operations, less your capital expenditures. That's the money they're going to use to buy back shares, pay out dividends, make acquisitions, pay down debt. If there's not ample money in the company for the free cash flow, because remember, if I'm the CEO of a company and I want excitement in my stock, I know that people out there love dividends. I may go borrow money to go pay a big dividend just to attract investors in and prop up my stock price. That's manipulation. If you don't think that happens, grow up. It happens. And it's just, that's just the reality. But luckily you found us and we're explaining this to you. So you always want to compare the dividend that is being paid out every year to the free cash flow to make sure it's sufficiently enough. How much? Two to one. Also depends on the company. Company like AT&T, they might justify a much higher dividend because what are they really growing into? But the other thing is about dividends, they're highly tax inefficient. Why is that? So I'm assuming you're just putting it in a normal account. When you get a dividend, you are taxed at the federal and state level for your, for your, for your dividend tax. Now, what you don't remember, realize though is, and this is what I love when people argue about, oh, we need a, we need a tax higher dividends. Guys, it's already been taxed. They're using money, companies paying you out in money that's already been taxed once before. When you see the net income of a company and the free cash flow of a company, that is after they've already paid income taxes of 35 or 40% or whatever the number is for corporations. So it's a highly tax inefficient way of paying out investors. But at the end of the day, people love getting their check and their dividend. Now, the current dividend yield in the market on S&P, I think is around 1.3%. One of the things I wanna show you guys is historical. Yeah, it's 1.3%. This is going back to 1870. The average has been 4.3%. So we're well below the average. And if you sit there and go, well, that includes this. This is for like a year, guys. Don't even worry about that. But overall, the average is around here. Just look at the chart, Mm -hmm. right? So we are very low on our dividend yield. We've been lower. In 2000, we had a 1.1% dividend yield or so. So it's still pretty low in terms of, but that's driven by market cap. Because at the end of the day, dividend yield is the dividend paid divided by the market cap, right? So as the market cap goes up and up and up in a bull market, and this stays the same, or even goes up at a slower pace, the, the dividend yield down. is going to go down, yeah, correct? I see. So again, I'm not saying you shouldn't own dividends. Dividends are great for people who are getting close to retirement or into retirement to try to generate some more income. So we have three ETFs that have been brought up to us about things to go look at, right? Yeah, one is the Vanguard High Dividend Yield ETF. One is the Schwab US Dividend ETF. And the third one is, of course, S&P Dividend ETF. So we'll take a look at all three, Paul. So the thing I love about this is the first one, the Vanguard, 2.7% dividend yield is considered the high dividend yield. That's just the way it is right now. Mm -hmm. By the way, look at this expense ratio, 0.06%. I love that. Nice. So what we can do here is we can see what are the holdings in here? All right. JP Morgan, Johnson & Johnson, uh, Home Depot, Procter & Gamble, Bank of America, all major blue chips here, guys. Look, Intel, Cisco, Pfizer, Coca-Cola. So to me, these are very, very stable companies. You're probably not going to get a lot of as much growth rate in the, in the value based on what people are thinking, but that dividend deal, is, that dividend is probably pretty secure overall in the portfolio, right? I'm not saying that it is secure, but there will be changes as things go on. I mean, who knows what's going to happen where companies might sit there and say, hey, we need to pull back the dividend. But people don't like it when companies pull back dividends. So a good company will only increase their dividend if they're very confident they can keep it going throughout. And you'll be able to find a list of companies that, are, that consistently keep their dividend the same or increase it over time. Mm-hmm. Okay? So that's the Vanguard. Next one, Schwab. 
Same expense ratio, really cheap, a little bit higher dividend yield. So nothing, you know, much different than Vanguard. And the holdings, Pfizer, Home Depot, Pepsi, Broadcom, BlackRock, Cisco, Texas, a lot of the same holdings, yeah, guys. A lot of the same. Not, they, don't have, they, they don't have JP Morgan in here, do they? And they might just avoid, well, the U.S. Bank's in here. But yeah, it, it's all a matter of preference at this point. The great news is we do have a stock, we do have, we, in our software, which we're not going to get into now, but our software allows you to go put all these individual stocks into our eight pillar system at once and tell you how the stocks look together. But the bottom line is you're getting a slightly better dividend yield, same expense ratio. Next one is just SPY. This one, higher expense ratio, 0.35%. Drastically higher, right? Yeah, and a lower dividend yield, 2.6%. So, and a higher turnover ratio, I just noticed. So the question becomes, why are you buying this one? I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, look at it going. Uh, you know, I'm sitting here saying, I think I'd rather have one of the other ones. I mean, the, the companies are a little bit different, but why pay? I mean, if my goal is dividend yield, why would I want to pay a higher uh, expense? You know, Mo's over there shaking his head. Exactly. We, why pay a higher expense to, to get, get a lower dividend yield? yield? Yeah. It's all a matter of preference a lot of times. People love Vanguard. People love Schwab. Vanguard's awesome. Jack Vogel's, you know, considered one of the best. In fact, Warren Buffett, I think, says Jack Vogel's done more for investing than anybody else in, like, the history of investing or some crazy quote like that. Now, I can't find the exact quote, and so don't quote me on this one, but somebody once told me that if you invested only in dividend-paying stocks from 1928 to now, you beat the market by 2 or 3% a year. That's a huge number. Yes. I don't know if that's true or not. I have yet to be able to prove that, but it's something I heard. I'd love for you as a user to try to Google that and see if you can find that. I don't know if that's true. Again, I'm repeating. This was said to me once off the cuff, which alone should make me question that because financial. <laughs> I, I had a financial advisor once tell me that the average return on the market was 15% a year. So anyhow, <laughs> um, dividends are wonderful. They can be a great way to like, you know, if you have a nice portfolio in retirement of a few million dollars and you get three or 4% dividend yield, a couple hundred grand a year in, uh, in dividends. Most normal people I talk to, Paul, they say they want to mitigate risk. I don't know what that means, but go ahead. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> they think that the stock market is risky in general. Just any forms of picking your own stocks. Well, there's more volatility. There's a difference between risk and volatility, guys, but go ahead. And not having a financial advisor would increase these risks. I think having a financial advisor increases your risk of not retiring uh, adequately. So I do tell people, like when people say, I want a set it, and forget it type investing style. Even when I handpick my little book that beats the market stocks, I told my neighbor, he's getting interested in our show and watching. I said, I spend about an hour a year <laughs> picking. But you know what you should do? A vast majority of my stocks. I didn't want to talk about this, but if, let's say you have 100 grand in a, in, with your financial advisor. If you don't think you're being charged 1,000 to 2,000 a year plus getting worse returns, a financial advisor is literally costing you two to four thousand a year. Guess what? Join our software, the Patreon link below, twenty-six dollars a month, three hundred dollars a year. You get people who are all looking at things the same way as you, and it's a good effort to sit there. And a financial advisor, I always tell people, is good for the emotional aspect of, of, of life. Yes. Well, if they, you have a good financial. Advisor, I get asked why do financial advisors even exist? As well, well, so you can call them and ask them what the heck is going on in the market. Let me ask you a question. You know, you can cut your grass, but a lot of people choose to have somebody cut the grass for them. It's me, somebody cuts my grass because I don't want to deal with it. I don't like the idea of doing it. I trust somebody else to do it. And if you're that with a financial advisor, go right ahead. But I don't want you believing that they're actually going to make you more money. Their goal, a good financial advisor will say, what is your goal for retirement? We're going to get you there in what we perceive to be the least risky way. The problem we have is a lot of financial advisors will then start putting you in individual investments. That's not their job. Their job is to guide you along the way and be your emotional support. It is still very expensive. But... In this situation, these are all big companies, guys. I mean, these companies, I mean, you look at these companies. Tell me any one of these companies that you think will be gone in the next 10 years. Do I think some of these might, maybe some of them are gone, but literally not a single company I'm looking at right now. I would be floored if any one of these companies are gone in the next 10 years. I would absolutely be floored. Mm -hmm. These are companies going to be around for a while, right? And I'm not endorsing this fund. I'm just sitting there saying, if this fits your criteria and you're willing to wait for decades to see value come through, I think you'll do fine and collect a nice dividend along the way. And by the way, when the market, if the market falls in half, your 2.6% dividend goes to 5.2%. And any new money you add. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. Mo, well, what about some ETFs to avoid? Like, say, any out of Kathy Wood's fund? Yeah. 
to me, I think, I've said it before, and I don't know, Paul, if you disagree with me or not, but it, it, to me, she's the way that she's putting these ETFs together, technically, yes, absolutely. It is technically an ETF yes. because it's a conglomerate of stocks that in a sector that move. But I think that what she's doing with those types of stocks, those hype things where they move, where you get an ETF that moves 10% in one day, I think it's being masked by the word ETF. So I personally think that you should avoid those types of stocks. And like we're recommending, it should be Vanguard, S&P, these Schwab ones, et cetera. Low, but, low cost ones. And yeah. low cost, yeah. And, and these to me are much better than mutual funds. They're just more low cost. Why are you paying more for mutual funds? And what is the stat? Over 80% don't beat the market? So it's, I keep reading, I've always heard 82 to 85%. I just finished the psychology of money, which you must read. Everybody must read Richer, Wiser, Happier on the Psychology of Money. 85% of actively managed mutual funds do not beat the market over year to year basis. And over 10 or 20 years, it's like 1% beat the market. Guys, just don't waste your money in actively managed mutual funds. Go buy a low cost ETF, diversify through that. I remember it's funny because dec- you know, 15 years ago when I had all SPY, mm-hmm. I remember my financial guy calling me going, Paul, you know, you're not very diversified. I'm like, why not? He's like, well, you have all SPY. I'm like, so I have all five. That's I have all five hundred companies in the S and P. I'm completely ultimate. diversified. You know what I mean? And that's that's the thinking there. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So if you do that, ETF doesn't mean less risk. It's what's inside the ETF that matters. Arc is not a. The top twenty holdings, seventeen don't make money. Yeah. Seventeen do not make money, and none of these lose money. <laughs> Literally, none of these lose money. And and I assume that a lot of you that are watching this, you're going for putting this money in there and. Hoping uh, be, being being more safe. Yes, I, I think that's a good way to put it. Arc is not going to do that for you. You're going to get w- w- crazy ups and crazy downs. These ones that actually make money, they, they don't have to worry about it. They just coast very sideways. They go like this over a long period of time. That's what take on ETFs. If you're a dividend investor, take a look. We appreciate you watching the video. If you like the software you're seeing, you can join the Patreon, and uh, we'll get it to you. So, um, thanks for following. Thanks for watching, and fondle the thumbs up. We'll see you next video. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks.